to hear about the Sunset Strip? Go to my website, jizzypearl.net, all you new subscribers, and check it out. I've written a bunch of books, and they totally rock. Get them at jizzypearl.net. Rolling, 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 though the streams are swollen, keep them doggies rolling. Rawhide! Picture it. Rolling down the highways and byways of America, a traveling gypsy, living out of a suitcase, living out of a bunk, on a rock and roll tour bus, with the road stretching in front of you forever and ever. That's the life. Bus life. It used to be like that. Back in the day. Back in 1990, I toured that blackout record for 10 solid months. 10 months! I didn't even recognize my house when I came home. I didn't want to be home. I wanted to be back out there. I wanted to be back living on that submarine with six or eight or 12 smelly rock and rollers, fighting, drinking, fing every night. People ask me in interviews, they say, what was the craziest thing you ever did on the road? Every night was crazy. Every night we drank too much. Every night we pushed the envelope of good taste and sheer debauchery. And lest we forget, I got to play music every night. Living the dream, that old cliche rings true traveling on a rock and roll tour bus every night. Good times, good times indeed. It started out with the Blackout in the Red Room record. We were just an unknown band back then, just one of a few dozen touring the circuit across the United States, song on the radio, maybe a video on MTV, completely naive. Some say greener than a shamrock shake. A typical day, the bus would pull up to some club in Albuquerque, or Omaha, Nebraska, Jersey somewhere, would park right next to the venue, and that's where the band would live for the day. No hotels, no showers, just living off of whatever sandwich food that the club decided to give us. Like rock and roll seagulls. We would start unloading our gear, setting up, bringing it into the club, and there already on the dance floor would be the two local opening bands, already set up, all crowded around their drums and their amps, staring at us, giving us the stink eye. I'd be setting up my mic on stage, just getting ready, and I could feel the three dozen eyes staring in the back of my head. Anyway, no big deal. We play our gig, we do our thing, and we tear down afterwards, load up the bus, drink some beers, and off the bus would go to another town and another city. That's just the way it was as the weeks turned into months. And you know what? We got really good. That's what happens when you play every night. You get really good. I loved getting up in the morning as the bus was still rolling. I'd get up before anyone else and I'd go out in the front lounge and get my coffee and I would just, I would open the shades on both sides of the bus and I would sit there drinking my coffee and I would just watch the panorama of the world go by. You know, Rocky Mountains, beaches, uh, Great Plains. It was just awesome all viewed from the viewpoint of a young rocker with stars in his eyes, doing the exact job that he had dreamed about his whole life. Doing it, being in it at that moment. It was unbelievable. I had dreamed of this moment for years, this very moment, and it sustained me through all the years, all the years of disappointments, the rejections, the record companies telling us that we sucked, the people, the managers telling us that we sucked, that we would never make it. And here I was, I was actually doing it. It was unbelievable. I was totally immersed in the life. I was an actual rock and roller, a rock and roller off stage and a rock and roller on stage, never leaving the confines 
of my wonderful little warm fishbowl. It was amazing. Then after a few months of playing the clubs, we actually got to jump on the Ronnie James Dio Lock Up the Wolves tour. That meant bigger places, amphitheaters, crowds, thousands of people. You know, Dio's fans really didn't care for us too much, but that didn't matter because Dio loved us. That's all that mattered. Then we jumped on the ACDC Razor's Edge tour. Arenas and stadiums. I was like Benjamin Button. I was growing up at an astonishing rate of speed. Within months of my record coming out, we went from clubs to theaters to sheds to arenas. It was unbelievable. It was wonderful and it was great until 1992, until grunge, so-called grunge, took away our so-called career. How dare you? And then we all went into cryogenic sleep for a few years and let the green days in the sky run its course. And then 1997 came along. Boom! Classic rock came back with a vengeance. I was in LA Guns on a bus again, playing the Rock Never Stops tours. Being in LA Guns, it was a fun band to be in. It was very fun, but sexually a little competitive because I was the lead singer. I always had to up everyone's game. You see, if someone had sex with one person, I had to have sex with nine people. If someone had sex in a bush, I had to have sex in a tree and so on. <laughs> Then I joined Rat in 2000 and kaboom, back on a bus again. It was awesome, man. The shenanigans every day with Robbie Crane and Karabi on the bus. It was good times. It may seem weird to some people living on a bus for so long, but I don't know, you get used to it. Your bus becomes your house. Your bunk becomes your bedroom. Some people don't like being in the bunk because it is like a coffin, but I'm telling you, I loved it. I could fall asleep totally easy. I would just shut the curtain, open up a book, and the vibration from the bus's generators was like 10,000 fingers of love urging me to let go. You might bicker and you might bitch at each other, but the bottom line is you're in a band and a band is a tribe and you're in a tribe. And when you're in that tribe, you defend your tribe against all comers. Now, speaking of that, I have the only funny 9-11 story. Rat was starting a tour and we were rolling on the bus September 10th. We were on our way to Tucson, Arizona. We wake up the morning of September 11th in Tucson and I'm half asleep still and Blotzer rips open my curtain at 8.30 in the morning and goes, we're under attack. And I'm thinking half asleep, Rat is under attack? From who, Dokken? those guys. We'll kick their ass. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. Now, as I said, I was usually the first one to wake up in most of the bands I've been in. So I was relegated to come up to the front lounge and clean up the nonsense from the night before. All the beer bottles and the empty pizza boxes. I would kind of clean everything up, put it all in a large garbage bag and get it ready for the trash. And of course, you can't shit on a bus. That's one of the big cardinal rules. Everyone knows that. When we would bring people on the bus, you'd always have to tell them, don't shit on the bus, don't shit on the bus. But, you know, sometimes people did. Now, if you were rolling and you just couldn't hold it, you did what was called a bus bomb. You would go into the bathroom and you would take one of those Walmart plastic bags and you would put it in the toilet and sort of line the inside of the toilet with it. Then, and then you could drop a couple of Lincoln logs and no worries, wrap it up like a deli sandwich and throw it out the window. If you were parked outside the club, then you would just take the shit bag and throw it under the bus. And if you were there for a day or a day or two, pretty much you would have like this giant pagoda of shit bags under your bus. Now, one of the things that we used to do in the old days is, is if you did a club date and the club owner ripped you off or didn't pay you enough, you would uh, open the valve on the toilet on the bus and just drench the parking lot with several hundred gallons of hot fermented piss. If he really pissed you off, you would have the bus driver 
run over the shit bags as you left, mashing them into the cement. It was good times. Sex on the rock bus is legendary. Now, did it happen? Oh yeah, happened a lot. Not so much as you get older, but in the beginning when you're starting out, oh yeah, it's like you're exercising the hammer of the gods every night. It's awesome. Take your new special friend into the back lounge, put on the music, have a couple of cocktails, several words of encouragement, and kaboom, off you go. And then off you went to another city and another special friend, and on 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 and on. I mean, it sounds crazy now. Here I am in 2022. Back then, guys and girls, equally callous, equally debaucherous. It was just what everyone did. And here we are today. Eh, no need to act the fool. But that doesn't mean that I don't look back with fondness on those bad old days because they were really fun. Memories, life experience, travel, my cup runneth over. Don't get old in your mind or you're just gonna get old. Sure old pal Jizzo, rockin' and rollin', and we'll see you next time.